Senator Markey, thank you. Senator uh, Sullivan, you're next, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And of course, uh, it's always good to hear from my <laughs> friend from Massachusetts. I don't. We thought it'd be nice to pair the two of you. I don't have side to agree with them on a lot of these issues. Um, just a reminder: the administration put a moratorium on any oil and gas leasing. And by the way, any permits to drill—that's a more detailed th uh, uh, requirement. They're still sitting on 4,621 permit to drill applications that they've stopped. So we have a lot of difference on this, but here's an area where Senator Markey and I probably agree. He talked about a revolution. He talked about greenhouse gas emissions. Let's get that up there. Okay. I, I want to talk about this chart for quite some time because it never, it never gets the uh, attention that it deserves. So uh, right here, this shows that's from 2005 to 2020, the United States uh, dropped its emissions of CO2 emissions by 970 million metric tons, okay? So do all the, uh, well, let's start with you, Ms. Uh, Sagma and Mr. Matheson. That's a pretty remarkable record, isn't it? Look at relative to China, relative to India, relative to any major economy in the world, since 2005, the United States has reduced greenhouse gas emissions by almost 15%, best in the world, isn't that correct? For almost two decades, correct? Everybody agree with that? I mean, those are the facts. How did that happen? Increased use of natural gas is the primary reason. Correct. It was the revolution. The shale in, revolution, yep. In natural gas. So had every other country in the world had a record like the, this, where do you think we'd be on global emissions? Again, panelists, you guys can all jump in. These are facts. Nobody ever talks about them because they're inconvenient truths, as Al, Gro uh, Al whatever that, Gore, thank you. I was thinking about someone else, but that's a whole other story. Um, Mr. Matheson, do you want to comment on this? Look, I think, I think from the electric cooperative perspective, yeah, we've seen a reduction in emissions. I mentioned it in my testimony, uh, primarily driven by switch to increase use of natural gas. Uh, we also have had... Uh, but I mean, this is astounding, isn't it? I mean, we're the leader in the world by far, correct? Yeah, the, yeah, the chart says it. Yeah. yeah. And China, of course, and India are going through the roof, correct? So... My question always is to the Biden administration, why would you stop that? Because right now, I mean, just look at the FERC's latest ruling. Look at, they all seem to be focused on shutting down the production of oil and gas. What, if this is the record right now, do you think it makes sense, Ms. Sagman, to, to shut down the production of natural gas in America or make it harder to produce like the FERC's latest rule just did? It does not. If we really wanted to provide meaningful solutions to climate change, we would look at increasing our exports of natural gas to the world so that they could deliver the same type of greenhouse gas. So that's a great segue. Thank you. You know, Senator Lummis, Senator Kramer and I, we put forward this plan several months ago, worked on it for many months. It's our American Energy Jobs and Climate Plan. And it would do more than almost anything because it focuses on that. Let me give you an estimate. We, we ran some numbers. If the United States significantly increased exports of a clean-burning American natural gas globally to India, we already export to India, we already export to China, what do you think the global emission reductions would be? I'll just, you have a ballpark figure, I can give it to you. I don't have a ballpark figure, but they would go down. But the problem is, like, we can't build pipelines so that we can supply our LNG export terminals. It, and, yeah. The answer is about 9% globally. 9%, which is remarkable. That's, that's um, modeling that we did as part of the, our plan. And it's based not on some pie-in-the-sky... Um, predictions that John Kerry and others make when they go around the world telling countries not to buy American natural gas. Can you believe that? That's what he does, which is, to me, remarkable, almost un-American. But how could we get to this? What are your recommendations where we can take what we're doing in America, 
And it, could you imagine if the rest of the world did what we're doing, what greenhouse gas emissions globally would do? They would dramatically drop. It would empower America in terms of our jobs, in terms of our energy, in terms of lower greenhouse gas emissions here and abroad. What more can we do to make that a reality besides adopting the Sullivan, Kramer, Lummis plan, which we know that you're all very enthusiastically supporting? Right. I, th I think, and I, I know it's things you've addressed as well, is we need to um, stop the overregulation of the industry. Um, and of course, we're heavily regulated, and we should be, but it's the additional regulations that they continue to pile on that are meant to get to an answer of no when it comes to natural gas projects. Move forward with the infrastructure, the pipelines, LNG terminals, so that we can export that same greenhouse gas reduction to the rest of the world. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I would welcome the chance to have a hearing on our plan. We think uh, it's very, it would be very bipartisan. Many of the issues discussed here today um, are in the plan, and it would have an impact like this. And who can argue with this? Who can argue with this? I don't even think my friend Ed Markey can argue with this. That is a real... That's real success, and we need to continue it, not try to curtail it or shut it down. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chair, if I could just add one more thing Please. to that. Well, I'd like to say, I mean, that from 2005 to 2020, I mean, I personally was working in the solar industry at that time, and that's when we saw the great advent of the renewable energy industry, solar coming online, wind coming online. So those reductions from the United States are all due to the great policies that we adopted here to advance renewable energy. But those not as much as natural with, gas. With all due respect, those reductions that I'm showing right there almost have zero to do with renewables. I'm an all the above uh, policy um, promoter in terms of energy, but that chart is due to the revolution in natural gas. And if you're claiming otherwise, you don't know what the facts are. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Stan, you want to finish your, your comment? I just say in terms of China here, I mean, I think we need to be really aware of the Made in China 2025 strategy there, which is advancing them towards transportation electrification. They have their own policies there that want to get off oil for the same reasons that we're seeing here because of the price spikes and the volatility there. They want to be uh, you know, advancing in electric vehicles because of the critical minerals processing that they control right now. And they want to be looking towards adopting autonomous vehicles and 5G technology, which is the future of a lot of different um, facets of their economy. And so I think we need to really keep an eye on China and what they're doing. And if they're moving forward aggressively with transportation electrification, then we need to do the same. All right. Thanks.